Good evening, everyone. Uh, most of you know that this is the second last night of the mission. The message I want to speak about tonight has challenged me and been in my heart for weeks. Being honest, I wasn't sure whether the Lord wanted to challenge me personally by this message or whether he wanted uh, me to share it with you. As the days have passed by over the mission, uh, I've been more sure and the more I've believed that the Lord wants me to share this message uh, with you tonight. I had a good friend recently told me that the four greatest lies the devil tells us is that there is no God, there is no heaven, there is no hell, and there is no rush. Over the last six nights that I have spoke, I have told you about six people's lives who have been changed by Jesus. We looked at Zacchaeus, the two criminals, the leper, blind Bartimaeus, the man possessed with demons, and the paralyzed man. All these men had several things in common. They were all sinners. They all recognized that they needed help and that they needed Jesus. They all pursued to meet Jesus, and finally their lives were changed as a result of them believing in Jesus. Had they not made a conscious decision to call upon Jesus, and trust them, trust him, and then all of them would have been lost, all six. Could I ask you a question tonight? Do you want to be sure of a home in heaven in a future day? If you do, please make sure that before the night is out that you ask Jesus into your heart as your own and personal savior. If you feel that there is something missing in your life, be glad, because that is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. I've said night after night that Jesus is passing by. Don't miss him. Don't miss this opportunity to get, to get right before God through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Soon this mission will be over. I speak tonight. John speaks tomorrow night. And it's planned that the mission I will end. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 says, and it's on the screen. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And this leads me into my passage tonight nicely. And the reading can be found in Luke chapter 16, verse 19, uh, to the end of the chapter. I'm not going to go through uh, every verse of just some of the verses uh, on the screen. Uh, and I'll just, in my normal fashion, uh, take you through that. First verse is then, there's a verse 25 first because it tells us a wee, a wee bit about the two men and then we go back to verse 22 and 23. This story firstly was told by Jesus. This story is straight from the mouth of Jesus. The story is about a certain rich man and a certain beggar named Lazarus. The story tells us that the rich man was clothed in fine clothes and that he fared sumptuously. This man had it all in life. He might have been a bit like uh, the rich man, Zacchaeus, that we looked at at the first night of the mission. He was a rich man. This man had plenty of money. He had good clothes, plenty of food, a family. It says near the end, in the end of the chapter that he had five brothers. This was a man of plenty. Verse 5 says that in life he received good things. I also believe this man knew what he had to do to secure his place in heaven. Did you hear that? This man had it all. And I believe he also knew what he had to do to get into heaven. Is that you tonight? You have what you need in life. And as well as that, you know what you need to do to get into heaven. That's a great position to be in but it's also an extremely dangerous position to be in. Why, you ask? Well, if you know what you need to do to get into heaven, and should you not do it, then you have said no to Jesus. In other words, you have rejected Jesus' offer of salvation. If that is you tonight, my advice to you is to accept Jesus and don't reject him. Please stay tuned in to the end of the message and you'll hear more. There was a second man. His name was Lazarus. He was a poor man, it says. He was a beggar. 
It also says he fed himself from the crumbs of the rich man's table. What a contrast. One man you'd say had it all, and one man you'd say that didn't. Which one do you think ended up in heaven? And which one ended up in hell? Look at verse 22. It explains that it came to pass that both men died. It says the beggar was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom or his presence. Abraham was an Old Testament, a Testament patriarch and was in heaven. What a lovely picture. I would assume that every one of us listening wants to end up in heaven in the presence of Jesus Christ. The verse also, however, tells us that the rich man died and was buried. Notice the difference. One was carried up into heaven and the other was buried and now in hell. Verse 23 actually says, it says that in hell, he, that's the rich man, lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and saith Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom, or it could be interpreted in his presence. Can you believe it? The rich man who had it all in life, the man of plenty, and who knew how to get into heaven whilst on earth, I believe, rejected it. He said no. No to the offer of salvation. He said no to God. No is a small word, but can be a dangerous word. And for this, it proved so for this rich man. Let me exp explain what makes me think this man knew the way of salvation. Firstly, from the depths of hell, he sees heaven. He sees Abraham and he sees Lazarus in it. He had an awareness of heaven. Verse 24, it says, he cries out for mercy on him. But it was too late. I'm going to use that phrase quite a bit over the next five minutes. But it was too late. This man cried out for mercy. But it was too late. Verse 30, thirdly, once he realizes it's too late for him, he pleads that someone would go tell his five brothers who are still living to repent. But it was too late. This man couldn't even help his five brothers who were still on earth living. It was too late. You know, that's the gospel in a nutshell. And believe me, it is possible that you know the gospel. You have heard it preached. You know deep down that you're not right before God. This man knew, but he'd done nothing about it. He was too late. What he had to do was so simple. We've looked at it night after night at this mission. And what a shame it would be that if you know the message, but you don't accept it, or you don't say yes to Jesus, you don't let him into your heart. If he cried out for mercy before it was too late, he would have been saved. He'd have been in heaven with Lazarus. He should have repented, apologized to Jesus for his sins, asked for forgiveness and followed, followed Jesus. Remember after blind Bartimaeus cried to Jesus to have mercy on him, he threw off his coat and followed Jesus. We've looked this week at how Jesus is the only one who can for, forgive sins. And I have explained, explained why each night. It's because he, this Jesus, is the one who has taken the punishment for your sin at the cross of Calvary. Jesus was punished by God for your sin and mine. He shed his blood so that your sins could be, be forgiven. The work is done. The work was done at Calvary when God punished his son for your sin and for mine. The rich man asks Abraham, this in verse 24, if he could get Lazarus to come down to hell to cool his tongue with water. You know, in hell, I believe you will be punished for all the sin you've ever committed. I believe it because the Bible tells it. I believe this, one re this is one reason why this man was in torment. It says he thirsted. You know, when I studied this, it reminded me of Jesus' fifth cry on the cross when he cried out, I thirst. After Jesus had borne God's punishment of your sin and of mine and of mine on the cross, it says he cried, I thirst. Imagine the very God of heaven coming down to this earth to be punished on Calvary, 
to take the punishment for our sins and to then have to cry, I thirst. Jesus is no longer thirsting. The Bible says that three days after he was buried, he rose from the dead. He appeared to the disciples on at least three occasions in, pers in person after his death. The Bible speaks of it. I'm sorry, I, at, the, at this point, I'm, I'm getting excited because I, as a believer, can look up to heaven, can pray unto God, knowing that Jesus, who has suffered for my sin, is currently sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for me. You know, one day I will see him. And it's of my prayers, John's prayers, many other people's prayers, that you will see him one day too in heaven. There are a number of things the rich man requested whilst in hell. Let's quickly look at a few. One, we've just looked at how he wanted Lazarus to cool his tongue. Once the rich man realizes it's too late for him, he then turns his attention on his five brothers who are still living. It says he prayed that Lazarus would testify to his five brothers who were living on earth. Finally, he asked, can someone from the dead not go and tell or warn his brothers so they will repent? The rich man realized he was too late and his attention shifted to his five brothers who were still living and still had the opportunity to get right before God. The response to every one of these requests was no. You see how the table was now turned? Once the rich man said no to God, and now God is saying to the rich man, no. Why? Because it was too late. That is so solemn. If you say no to Jesus, that's God in flesh, one day Jesus will say no to you, and it will be too late. I feel this message is really challenging someone tonight. And I don't know, or maybe I do want to labor the point. But if you say no to Jesus, that's God in flesh, one day Jesus shall say no to you. And it will be too late. Don't be too late. Make sure of your salvation tonight. I want to leave two final points before I close. Verse 26. It says there is a great gulf fixed between the rich man and Lazarus. In summary, it says that those in hell will never get out and those in heaven will never see hell. There is two sides. If you end up in hell, you're there to stay. If you end up in heaven, you will never see hell and that, and that is a marvelous thing. I've only recently seen a verse in Revelation chapter 18, or sorry, chapter one and verse 18. And I have it, as my last slide, which you can look at whenever I'm closing, but I'll just read it out. And it's Jesus speaking, and it says, I am he that liveth, that's Jesus, and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Did you notice that? Jesus has the keys of hell and of death. Be sure to trust him tonight. My final point is this, and it can be seen in verse 29 and verse 30. Abraham to the rich man says to the rich man, your brothers have the prophets, let them hear. Verse 30, if they don't hear or listen to the prophets, then they won't be persuaded. John and I have been preaching now for 13 nights. It'll soon be 14, that's two weeks. We are not prophets. But we believe the Lord asked us to do this mission, and we have obeyed that. We're glad we've done it, and the response has been great. But our aim and desire is to, have see, to see people saved and one for Jesus Christ. It's the prayer of many people, including John and I, that you will be persuaded tonight to trust Jesus before it's too late. Don't let it sit. Trust Jesus. If you're undecided, then ask, contact me, contact John. We'd be only too happy to help. As we have said, we can't save. It's Jesus who saves. 
just make sure that one day you don't end up realizing that it's too late. Trust Jesus tonight. I put up the last slide and you can read through it uh, at your leisure over the next minute or two on the screen as I just uh, close. I want to thank you very much uh, for listening e each night. As I said, the response has, has been marvellous. Uh, and please don't forget to like our Facebook page, that's God's Mission. And by doing that, we'll be able to uh, keep you informed of all our plans we might have in relation to the mission in the future. God willing, of course. But please, if you're not right before God tonight, please trust him before it's too late. Don't be like this, this rich man, the man of plenty. He had it all on this earth. He had it all in life. But at the end of it all, it was too late. The most important thing he could have done on earth was to have trust and obeyed God. The most important thing you can do is to trust Jesus and accept him. Be right. Be ready. Uh, let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message. Lord, we thank you for every night of the mission where the gospel has went forth. Lord, we thank you for every person who has taken the time to tune in. Lord, we want to pray for each one of them individually. Lord, we especially pray for those who have not got a, their own and personal relationship with Jesus Christ the Saviour. Lord, we just pray that they wouldn't leave it till it's too late. Lord, if you're striving with them, if you're challenging, Lord, we just pray that they will humbly bow before you, acknowledge who you are, and may they ask you into your heart. Lord, we, it's, it's only through you, Lord, eh, where anyone can receive salvation. And Lord, we just pray that tonight there will be many one for you, Lord. We just ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you all again for listening.